What is up guys? Welcome back. So this is part 9 of my beginner guide series. This is going to be the second to last part. And in my last part, I'm going to be covering just anything I've ever missed before. So it's going to be kind of like a makeup episode. Um, and I think it's pretty good to end it at 10. It's like a perfect, you know, number. Um, and I think it's a good idea to end it because, you know, obviously the, the guide is catching up to the mid game and I pretty much covered everything I really need to. So I'm going to try to wrap everything up into two more videos. And in the future, definitely every single month, I'm planning to make more beginner guide series um, during the month because I think it's always relevant. There's always going to be new people joining the game, so I definitely can renew my content and um, talk about things maybe I've missed before or I haven't learned yet. So this video is going to be talking about resource management, mainly gold management, because a lot of the other things I might have talked about before, um, and there's not that much to talk about. So first things first, we're going to go into the shady shop. This is probably where a lot of people, like, where I spent a lot of my gold early on. Um, I bought a lot of these pieces, these random pieces, and also a lot of the high eggs, because it always is hot, and then I just buy them. Don't do that. Don't don't buy the eggs and don't buy these soul stone pieces unless unless it's the soul stone for a specific monster that you need. Um, what I mean is like for example, the only monsters I'm collecting now are the are the Yukis and the um, the Kuras because I'm planning to use the Kira to eventually raise my Dark Kira to Evil Evil Three. And the Yukis, I want to use them to raise my Yuki to Evo 2. And I'm also collecting pieces for the Wood Banshee, um, because I, I really want this monster as well. And I'm also collecting a few pieces for um, the Water one as well, just so I can get you know get her to Evo 2. And also the Fire one, uh, just, just, to, just to level her up once I do get her. But I'm not... Actually, I, for now, I wouldn't even buy these the pieces for the Water and the Fire one, because I don't even have her. Pretty much, you're going to be able to see those pieces in the future. They're not, they're pretty common. Um, you're definitely going to be able to collect the monster, like, you know, at least one of the monsters that you want in maybe just like, you know, two or three months of collecting random pieces. So eventually you're going to get them, but it's going to take quite a long time. And if you buy every piece that you see, you're going to be very, very gold starved and you won't be able to do anything um, to progress. Your, or like you're gonna have to spend a lot more time making that gold back in order to pro progress. So that's just kind of my take on that. You, some people might disagree with me on that because originally one of the reasons why I bought all the pieces and bought all the eggs was because someone recommended that everyone do that on Reddit, and I just blindly followed that until I eventually um, one of my viewers pointed out that you know if you collect all those pieces. It, it's going to take you half a million gold by the time you summon it, you know? So you, you, would, you would have already spent half a million gold. And I was thinking half a million gold for a four star. Kind of not worth it. Um, unless it's a four star you absolutely need, you know? So it's kind of the same thing with the eggs. Um, you're spending like a hundred thousand, a hundred, like... 150,000 gold for the, you know, the, the other eggs and 125,000 for the normal eggs. That is a lot of gold as well and also costs money to actually summon. Um, it costs, you know, 10, 10k more. So that's like 10k added on top of that in order to actually summon. That is a lot of gold as well. And if you, if you buy them, then you're going to be gold starved as well. Um, there's a, there's other places where you can get the eggs. You can get the eggs from golems. If you do farm golems a lot, you will be able to get some eggs. And also from the Starstone dungeons. Um, if you can if you can farm B5, B6, there's a, a little, uh, pretty low chance of dropping an egg. But if you can farm B9, B10, like every, you know, few, actually no, like I wouldn't even say a few, but like after a lot of runs, you're definitely going to get some eggs. So eventually, you're going to be able to save up on eggs and do summons. Um, this is probably going to be your main source of of, of summoning um, for a free-to-play player or even a pay-to-play player. Like, because I don't even see myself like spending 
thousands in the game just summoning over and over. Um, probably I'm just gonna have to farm like everyone else, and then I can use I can pay a bit to like you know catch up a bit. The the next thing is always do these gold dungeons. These are very good. They're they're a really good daily source of income. Um, for the energy that it takes to do it, it's it's definitely worth it. So always do the gold dungeons, and always. Um, yeah, just always do the gold dungeons um, and pretty much do your Tower of Chaos every single day or every single month because they give a lot of gold as well if you can get to the top and also the re the rewards. Um, they're not really worth the gold like in terms of energy efficiency but it's definitely worth the, <laughs> worth the other rewards so you, you kind of have to do it as well. There's a lot of gold to be made here but it's not um, really energy efficient. But you kind of have to do it anyways for the, the TLC reward, so that's that's another gold source income. The easiest way to make make gold in the game is obviously to farm the golem floors. Um, basically, like you know, these the floors are separated by every three floors, so basically as high as you can. So like either B B7 or B9 if you can farm like these three floors, or like these you know one of these floors um, if you can farm one of these floors. Just farm as high up as, as you can, you know, in like you know, for, for every three floors, and you will be able to get a lot of a lot of these gems. And the gems with the substats um, sell for more than the gems that don't have substats. So the the gems that you make uh, or you get from golems is going to be is going to be worth a lot more than the gems that you get from the random maps. So if you're thinking of making gold fast, um, you can just you can just basically farm the golems. If you can have a stable, if you have a stable team for any of the golem dungeons, just farm them, and then you will be able to make make some gold. The next little thing I want to talk about is arena resource arena tickets. Right now, it's not really that important to to do every single arena fight, although I personally do it because of how they reduce the cost of the secret eggs. And how the variant eggs cost like 900, which is like super, super overpriced. So every single week, I usually grab the clean, the high secret egg, fiery egg, ocean egg, and the grass egg, and I just leave the the variant eggs because they're just they cost like wait they cost like six times wait no wait yeah they cost six times more than the the normal eggs. This costs 150, you know. Wait, is my math right? Yes, they cost six times more. So, but if you're if you're constantly doing arena, maybe every two weeks or so, you will be able to afford one of these variant eggs, and then you can just buy it. It's just extra resources, and if you have the time, definitely, um, you know, might as well do it. Like, there's you don't you don't lose anything. Like, if you just refresh the list, you'll see people with like a one man defense, and then you just you just hit this. You know, it takes you twenty seconds. Um, and can't really do anything about astro gems. A lot of people do like try try to like you know raise like random one stars and convert those one stars um, into Evo three in order to get at get the astro gem bonus. And they're basically converting gold into astro gem. I do not recommend doing that because I would I would actually say that gold is more valuable. Um, Obviously, you need the astro gems to refresh, but you really just need enough astro gems, and you're not really ever going to be starved on astro gems if you just keep up with the events. Even if you just constantly refresh, as long as you're watching your energy efficiency when, whenever you're farming, whatever you know. So, uh, what I mean by that is like, for example, if you're raising a monster for exp, um, it's much more energy efficient to farm extreme mode than it is to farm normal mode. Because like normal mode, if you farm this, it gives you, it won't even give you half of what you get from extreme mode, you know. And extreme mode doesn't even cost twice as much as normal mode. So it's much more efficient to farm extreme mode if you're like farming EXP. Um, it's more efficient in, in, in EXP and in gold than extreme mode than, than to farm normal mode. And also for, um, for the golems. The en energy efficiency increases as the higher you go in the golem dungeon. So, 
like when you're when you're at B10, um, like B10 is actually more energy efficient in terms of like making gold because the gems are better and, and they're able to sell for more compared to B7, B8, and B9. Um, over the long run. So that's another thing you might need to watch out. And there is one last resource that nobody really talks about, but I think is very, very important in this game, and that is time. Time is super, super important. I think um, in, in terms of like progression, time is what limits you the most in this game. Because you can, you can constantly be refreshing and farming just as much as everyone else. But the, the people who can farm faster will be able to progress faster. You know, so if you have a team that can run uh, the same dungeon as some some other guy that can run the team, and it takes them five minutes to farm, and only takes you three minutes, you're gonna be able to like progress a lot faster than that guy. And some people say like, okay, maybe you'll run out of resources, but if you're farming the most energy efficient place um, compared to the other guy, and you're able to farm it faster, I would I would actually say that like you you will be able to get enough. Um, energy from events and astrogens from events as long as you like basically never summon and never use your your astrogens for anything else besides refilling for for more farming um so people that have faster teams that can farm maps faster will definitely be able to progress fa faster than people who don't have those teams um and this is especially true if you pay a little to play because if you if you're like pay to play then obviously you will never really run out um, and a lot of people that pay to play really just pay to play to do more summons and summons are definitely not worth the astrogens they just do it just for just for the hell of it just for fun um, because you know we all we all really like to summon but if you're if you're strictly trying to progress then you can also try to like you know if you're if you're pay to play you can try to never spend your astro gems for summoning and use it only for refreshing and refilling and farming um that's just something i i've found out after playing the game for a little while i found that like time is the most limiting factor in terms of my my own progression um and nobody really talks about it nobody talks about it yet because not everyone is at the point where you know everyone can farm b10 if everyone was at the point where every like the majority of the player base is able to farm golden's b10 and they can you know when dragons comes out they can farm farm dragons b10 as well they're gonna be talking not about like you know building teams they're gonna be talking about building the fastest team for that dungeon so they can farm as fast as possible um, this is just something I learned like from from my background from playing Summoner's War. Um, it's probably going to happen in this game as well. You'll you'll definitely be able to see it in a few months. Um, so yeah, that's that's all I really wanted to talk about in this video. Hopefully this helped you guys out a little bit. And next video I'm going to be covering everything I've ever missed in these Beginner's Guide series. It's a little bit longer, but I want to cover as many things as possible. I'm going to be making more of these in the future. You know, as I said before, um, just kind of like a monthly thing, just to keep the keep the newer players always informed um, with the latest information or latest knowledge that I, I, I have at the time. And also, if you really like this video, um, please do leave me a like. Likes help me so much. Like they, it helps my videos get shared a lot. Um, if you if you would just like those videos, I'd really really be really really happy. Um, Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.